blow the whole lot up. I mean, that, that's the next. And you're even, there's an implicit assumption that you're making inadvertently, possibly, that intelligence is an inevitable, inevitable consequence of the evolutionary record. And I, I, I'm skeptical of that, because if that were the case, what we call our intelligence would have happened multiple times in, in the fossil record, and it, it hasn't. Whereas other things have shown up plenty of times, like the, the sense of sight and locomotion. There's some rather inventive ways things can get around the world. My favorite is the snake, of course. No arms, no legs, yet it gets around just fine. I'm, I'm imagining a alien living, uh, visiting Earth stumbling on a snake, the only creature it sees, right? And then it goes back and tells its home people, you're not going to believe what I saw. There's a creature on that planet. No arms, no legs. It can still get around. It detects its prey with infrared rays and can eat things five times bigger than its head. And they'll think the guy was on drugs. Yeah. Yeah. It's an ordinary snake sitting here on our earth. Yeah. Another, just while I'm on the subject, big disappointment I have are Hollywood aliens. And I don't know who to blame for this, Hollywood or biologists that advise them. Hollywood aliens are way too anthropomorphic for me. Even E.T., he had a head, shoulders, arms, okay, he had three fingers instead of five. There's still fingers at the end of a hand. He had legs, he had feet. That's human. And look at the diversity of life on Earth to draw from if you want to think about the ways of being alive. I'm just so disappointed. And I, 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 not even that I know that I can help them, but one of my favorite aliens ever was the blob. Did you, yeah. did you see that movie? No, I, I don't see as many movies as you would see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blob is classic. It's just, it, so, so that alien was a blob, right? That's what it was. And it would just kind of move along and it would grab onto you and suck out your blood and keep moving. And it was non-anthropic in concept and it came from space. And I just thought... That was an attempt to try to create some kind of yeah, way of being alive. That's, very, that's a very laudable attempt. It is interesting to look around the animal kingdom and, and count up the number of times that some things have, have evolved. I mean, eyes several dozen times, ears um, a, quite a large number of times. Echolocation, that's finding a way around by sonar, only four times. So and that's a bat a, and who else? A bat, whales, um, uh, and two different groups of birds, okay. um, cave-dwelling birds. And, and a few rudimentary examples in some shrews and sea lions, but really four, four different times. L intelligence and language of the humankind only once, as you pointed out. Um, so it can't be that important for survival. Well, if yeah, natural selection yeah. is at work, it should have shown up many more times. You think so. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's a genuinely interesting point that I think biologists haven't thought about enough, is to go around the animal kingdom counting up the number of separate arisings of something, because that does tell you something about what you might expect elsewhere in the universe. You'd expect eyes, you might expect echolocation, um, hypodermic syringes, stingers, um, about a couple of dozen, uh, I'm talking about independent evolutions now, if you look about spiders. Our version scorpions. of that would be called guns, yeah. yeah. About called what? Uh, our version of the hypodermic stinger would be called a gun. Yes, right, okay. Yeah. Someone with um, so but I'm talking about an, a, something that penetrates the body and injects poison. Yeah. And, and that's, so it, that's an interesting question. And another relevant point is you look around the world at different island continents and say, how many times, how, how similar are they? You look at Australia, the Australian mammals, for example. And there are very, very powerful similarities between Australian mammals, which evolved entirely independently of mammals in South America, independently again of mammals in Asia and Africa. And so, again, that gives you a kind of a clue for how predictable evolution is. Other worlds are going to be very different, but we perhaps shouldn't write off the possibility that the Hollywood um, aliens are not, they might not be not that unimaginative. I mean, my colleague Simon Conway Morris has even suggested that there is very likely that there will be, if not humans, at least bipedal, um, big-brained, language-toting, hand-toting, um, forward-looking eyes for stereoscopy, pretty much humans. He thinks it's highly likely. He's got a religious agenda, I'm sorry to say, um, for that. Um, but but I, I, like him, I, I appreciate the power of natural selection. Um, I think that... Whatever By the way, I think if he were... Uh, uh, 
if he were a creature other than a primate, he might be giving a different list of things. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's probably right. The uh, horse doesn't have two eyes facing forward, but the horse damn near can see directly behind it. And so the horse would be valuing that fact. Oh, I'm not, den I'm not denigrating horses at all. I mean, it, it, um, <laughs> uh, there, are, there are a lot I'm just of saying that's your first sign that there's bias is you start listing the human features that you would no, want no, in no, an alien. I, I, don't, I don't want to say that, that I'm not picking on humans because they're superior, but because they're us. I mean, um, we, we have stereoscopic vision, we have three-dimensional vision, horses don't. Uh, they have a different kind of vision, insects have a different kind of vision, bats have echo. I mean, it's not vision, but it's, uh, but it's um, using sound to produce what I would guess inside the bat's brain is probably perceived rather the same way we perceive visually, because why wouldn't you use the tools of the brain, of the mammalian brain, to create an, to image. Create an image, to create sure. a model of the world? I've even speculated By that... By the way, that they show that in, forgive me, the movie Daredevil. <laughs> Do they have he, bats? He's blind, he's blind, and when it rains, he likes when it rains because the rain hits people and he hears the different sort of reflections okay, of the sound, yeah. and he saw his girlfriend for the first time in the rain. There's the image of her. Okay, but my speculation is that bats here in This is America. I've got to talk to, about our movies here. My, you know, sorry. my speculation is that bats here in color. Because why wouldn't you use color? Color is just a I mean, hue, perceived hue, is nothing more than a label that the brain uses. Precisely. That's all it is. Yeah. Color, you attach it to some you sequence of something. changed phenomena. And so b bats would, would most usefully use color as a sign. For example, the difference between a, a furry moth and a leathery locust uh, might be perceived as red versus blue. Mm -hmm. And that would be a very useful way for natural selection to have tied the labels of hue onto uh, something that would seem very strange to us. but, but um,